Hi guys, it's Shishka Barber one coming right back at you with another Boom Beach video. Today's video, guys, we're still on the warships. We're still sailing the seven seas of fun and imagination. Um, I've got a few more things to share with you. Nothing like the last video, guys. That was amazing. Thank you so much for the response that I got for that. Um, it, my channel's blown up. I've been busy keeping track of comments and trying to keep up, keep up with all of you guys that have seen this video. So I'm sure I have a lot more viewers here, and to that I say welcome and thank you. Um, let's get into it. I know you want to hear some more dirt, all right? Um, well, let's see. Where to begin? Um, well, as you can see, here's my warship right now. We're still rocking three engine rooms. I hit rank 19 last night, so um, I can guarantee you I'm the only person, well, pretty much the only person with three engine rooms at rank 19. I'm just that crazy. We'll show you some of that craziness, but not quite yet. I want to talk about one more problem that's been going on in this game, and it's something that I saw coming a long time ago. Um, and the concept involves what we call win trading. Win trading is what occurs when people get matched up with their friends, and then they let their friend win. And this can be a very big problem. It has been a problem they've dealt with in Clash Royale for a long time. Um, that uh, groups of people can work together to push one person up to the top through what we call win trading. Now this oftentimes happens through Q manipulation, but it's also much easier to do once you've set yourself up at the top of the pack. Because then, when you're going to queue for a match, there's a much smaller pool of players that are eligible to be uh, matched with you. So, if you're queuing up at the same time as somebody else, and you're that high up, there's a pretty good probability that you will be matched up, at least eventually. So if you do this enough, and you play the game this way, it will favor you, and you definitely have an unfair advantage, and it's, it's not fair play. Well, this game had one more thing going for it here in Warships that I hadn't thought of till it kind of started happening as well. I mean, I, I saw it heading that way. Let me just redefine the term. So the generic term, we call this win trading. Now, in Warships, we have what we call win streak trading, which gets even worse. It's one, it's one layer worse. Instead of, like, if there's two people going at it, this, this can be done with two people, right? So you get friends that they're always on win streaks. And if you can maintain a win streak, you're gonna get two stars, like your friend, let's say you, you give your friend that win because he's on the win streak. He gets two stars, you lose one. But then you get onto a win streak, you meet up with your friend, then he lets you win, you get two stars, he's lost one, there is a net gain of two stars into the pool, one for each of you. And that's just the horrible. So, when, when, I mean, it's just not fair, right? So when you, it's, I shouldn't say horrible, it's a strong word, but it's just not fair. And when you look at things on the global leaderboard and you wonder how these people got all those points in order to get to Legendary 10, I can promise you it's in large part due to win trading, uh, win streak trading. This was the final mechanism that's being used in the game right now where that allows players to achieve these levels. Um, I've also heard a really funny thing that there's a bug in the game that <laughs> once you hit Legendary 10, the game just crashes. So, ha <laughs> ha I'm not sure if they can get back into it or not, but I guess the game was never programmed like in the intent or the idea that someone could get that far into it, <laughs> but they have, and it's everywhere. Um, so at least we can grin at that, that I know there's some problems with being able to log into the game after you hit <laughs> Legendary 10. Um, but that's also something they need to probably work on, but it's obviously not a top priority. <laughs> um, but the win streak trading absolutely is. This goes back to what I was talking about with just getting rid of the, um, the bonuses associated with win streaks in general. And this is just, this is the best example I can give you guys of why it's a horrible idea, but everything else said in the previous video is also true. This is just uh, the modern way that's being exploited right now in the game. So there you go. There's some news for you. Um, on top of that, you know, I think there's been a lot of questions about the reset, to reset or not to reset. You guys gave me a lot of good information and a lot of good feedback on that last video. So I've seen like two sides of the story now. Um, I've been going back and forth with where I stand on it. I still think I'm for the win streak, or I'm sorry, for the, uh, for the reset. But let, let me just talk about some of those points. Like, well, I think the points for it are already kind of made. The points against it would simply be that there aren't a lot of players that might even be aware of what's going on, although maybe after my last video that changed a little bit. Um, so, you know, it gets into them admitting the problem. And I think we talked about this before, but um, by, by not resetting it, it does allow players to, um, to still play in the game and experiment with it. We've been doing a lot of that in Ship with a Plan. However, the quality of data we're getting from our experiments is still not that good because we're dealing with tech trees that are just impossible or the logic that arrived at them is not a logical path that anyone would take if playing within the proper constraints of the, uh, the construct of the game or whatever. 
So it, there's just not a lot to learn, but let me say this. Um, we are learning stuff, and we're learning stuff at an advanced level that not a lot of other players are privy to. Just like strategies, you know? Um, and that still gives us an unfair advantage, and that unfair advantage that, that, that we can, we, our knowledge, the knowledge we're gaining from the position we're at in the game right now, we can still take that with us into the next season. And that's not really fair in a sense, but it's not that bad. But it's not really that fair because that still gives us a competitive advantage over most everybody else. And it's reasons like that that I still really ultimately support a reset, but that's only from the player perspective. I know Supercell has a lot of their own issues when it comes to maintaining favorable, um, you know, reviews or whatever you want to call it. You just need to have a favorable view in the public. And by making a reset, like we were talking about before, that probably works against that. Uh, they did give us that really weird cryptic video, the switcheroo thing. Not quite sure what that means. Real quickly, I'll just explain. I think that... And we're back. Sorry, I had a phone call while I was shooting. Um, yeah, so back to that uh, cryptic video that I was talking about here, the switcheroo. I'll just start at the top and edit it back in properly. Um, basically, the way I'm looking at this video, it didn't make sense because there weren't a lot of words, but um, Hammerman, at the start of it, he's up there preaching on a platform and I guess telling people how good the Warships is. He's probably like Supercell. He represents Supercell. And, um, you know, he's really happy to, to launch this on the Maiden Voyage. All the riflemen that are down there listening to him, that's us. That's the players, okay? And we're all just, like, waiting for these good things that are being told to us. And then on the inauguration day, when the ship was supposed to go on its Maiden Voyage, a, a parrot or some kind of a bird, I'm not sure what it was, comes through, switches the bottle of champagne for a big thing of dynamite, and then the whole warship sinks and it blows up. So I think that's like Supercell's way of saying that as they thought this was going to be an amazing fun day and in the end it just blew up to be kind of a, a disaster of sorts. Um, then we see the, the hammer, or the um, I call them Johnsons, the riflemen, they're all crying. That's us as the players. Uh, I don't really like that interpretation of it, but that's what I see. And then Supercell or Hammerman is angry and they're mad and they're frustrated. Um, I kind of think that we're also angry, mad, and frustrated as players, too. Um, but whatever, that's just the way I read it. I don't know what to make of that video. You tell me, in fact. I'd like to see your speculation in the comments of what you think the Switcheroo video meant. But my point is, that's the only real response that I've seen from them regarding just all the chaos <laughs> that's been happening since the uh, release of Warships. I still love Warships, guys. I still love Boom Beach. Don't get me wrong in any of this. We're still having fun playing the game. Um, but... I guess, I guess that's really all there is to talk about on that. The only other real big issue right now, and one reason I wouldn't want them to necessarily reset it, I guess, is the fact that we've still got problems with these, these timers on these star chests. And, you know, going back to the previous video where I said people are running into these walls where they just can't progress, it makes it extra harder to progress when you can't even get your star chest on time. A few points on that. We don't know exactly how it works, the bug, but we have some ideas. So I can give you some advice. Um, to make sure the timer works like as it's supposed to or at least kind of uh, First of all if you have multiple accounts linked through Supercell ID You should always log out when you're when you're done playing the game for the day You should always log out on your primary warships pushing account um, It seems to work better that way, but that's not the real issue the real issue I think I mean I think there's multiple issues so, and we've isolated some but not all I think the biggest one though is when people are offline and you get raided when you get raided for some reason, like on your home base, uh, that somehow stops the chest timer. At least that's the patterns that we've seen by just comparing uh, timer, timer timestamps and our event log or activity log. And we've kind of deduced that a little bit as well. Uh, I've got no advice for you on that other than, I mean, I can't tell you not to get raided, other than um, just log in periodically or find ways to stay online permanently but ways that don't violate TOS. So that would mean just staying up and keeping the game active the whole time while you're awake. It's a little bit of a stretch, but um, these are the ways that I can help guarantee that the chest timer works. The timer works when you're in the game and looking at it. You, you can see it ticking right, right down there. It, it definitely works. I'll put my face over it. You see it's right, right down there. It definitely works when you're in the game. Um, and you just might need to log in periodically and check on it to make sure it's still ticking, especially if you get raided between the times that you're uh, not logged in. All right, um, but I think if they can fix that, I think we're off to a pretty good start in terms of what needs to be taken care of in the game. You eliminate the two-star bonus on win streak, you fix the chest timer, and, uh, and then I th I'm pretty sure the whole not deploying engine rooms thing, that's probably a bug too, so I think they should fix that. Um, but those three things, I think, are the biggest issues in my mind that would prevent them from going full out with a good release of warships. If they can 
tackle those three guys, I think we're in really good shape. Um, that's it. Let's jump into some gameplay though. Let me explain a bit more about my strategy now. We're gonna actually get the strategy, finally. Um, this is where half of you guys tune off, but that's okay. Um, so here we are at rank 19, rocking three engine rooms. Now I'm sure you're thinking, am I getting matched with people with three engine rooms? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Uh, more like five and six. Um, nobody's crazy enough to come here with three engine rooms. Now, yes, I do have a bit of an advanced tech tree, of course. Obviously, I've gone well beyond where three engine rooms go. Um, I haven't really added a lot of stuff since our last video. I did spend all of my uh, upgrade tokens since then, but they, they, they go fast. Um, I'm still primarily running Heavy Zooka for four Heavy Zooka. That's four, four boats of heavies, four boats of Zookas with Brick and her battle orders. Brick is maxed out. Where is she? Over here, which is quite nice. Um, and that's basically it. The, the, oh, here, here's some great advice for all players. Please listen. Drop, drop ice, as I call it. You have to remember this is PvP. What I mean by dropping ice would be the equivalent on your home base where you have um, ice guardians, ice masterpieces, all that stuff. You need to have your defensive attributes way up there. So this is one of the reasons I'm also able to do it, guys. <laughs> I've got 100% building health right now and 70% building damage, defensive building damage. You guys really need to drop ice. This is a PvP-based thing. If you're not focusing on those abilities of building health and defensive building damage, you're doing it wrong. So definitely put some more emphasis on that if you're not, because I certainly see that pattern with a lot of players. Um, and other than that, I mean, I can tell you there's still some advantage by moving through the tech tree the way I have. Like, when I'm working on things like upgrading defensive building damage or whatever, sometimes I find that it's cheaper just to move over into the next tier, like up here, and unlock it, and then spend a few upgrade tokens. Whereas when I was back over here, it was more expensive to upgrade it to get that next 10% that I needed. It was way cheaper just to move through the tech tree, come over here, spend uh, some unlock keys, and spend less upgrade tokens to get that same, actually I got 20%. When I was just trying to get 10, I was able to get 20 out of that. And it was still a better way to do it. I mean, bottom line is I knew I would be unlocking that node anyway. So why not go ahead and unlock it a little bit sooner and start putting points in there because it's cheaper. That way I can get the benefit more quickly. It's another advantage of playing the way I have. Um, but anyway, I think when people see this base, they're, they're shocked. They underestimate it. They don't realize how much building health and damage I've already got on it. And they think it's going to be a cakewalk. Oh, it's not. And um, in particular, there's one thing I've done on the defense to really, to really mess with my players. It's the placement of these shock launchers and the doom cannons. These can all be shocked in one shock. They can, but it's what we call a hard shock. It's a very hard shock to make, but you can do it. So the thing is, I'm tempting players with value. I'm tempting them to, to try it. They might be successful once, but <laughs> it's really hard to repeat that time and time again. The other thing this does, so obviously they'll make mistakes and then they're not ready for it and then they have to react. The other thing this does is it really takes their attention and focus away from the other parts of the warship and the other action that's going on because they have to be really focused on landing that perfect shock, but then they don't realize when mortars or machine guns or anything else is doing damage to their troops, it's a little bit harder for them to see that because they're too busy focused over here. That's the philosophy. I think it's been working. Let's jump into a battle. I'll probably lose. I'll be honest because I was struggling a bit just to get to rank 19 and then, well, I had a win streak. Like I was able to get up there on a win streak and uh, here we are. But I have a feeling that it won't be the same. Um, it's definitely hard to do this, guys. This At the point what I'm playing right now, you do have to be pretty good at attacking to pull this off because I start at a pretty big disadvantage only having three engine rooms. But let's jump into it. Let's see. It all gets down to, I can take six engine room bases. I can, but not when they have a whole bunch of rockets. If we see a bunch of rockets, I'm pretty screwed. Or if we see a lot of defensive building traits, I'm also pretty screwed. Speaking of, it's another thing. I really wish that they had on the screen the amount of um, stats of the warship we're fighting. It's not there. I thought they told us it would be. You have to inspect it off the buildings to like derive it. But, uh, you know, because buildings all have different upgrade levels, it gets a lot more complicated. I just, I really wish that number was just right on the screen. Like your enemy has this much building health and this much uh, DBD, defensive building damage. Just, I don't want to like decipher it. I'm too busy checking other stuff like ranges and whatnot when I'm scouting to like start doing a bunch of math. And I can do the math, but most players can't. So I think that should be just like right on the screen. In fact, I'll walk you through the math on our opponent. Here we go. So here we go. Four, oh, there's one more bug we could talk about. Let me show you how this one works. Um, it's called the, the replay bug. You might have noticed this. Anytime you switch troops, once you've uh, started the fight, when you go to the replay, it's only going to play 
like with the troops that you already had selected. So what's really funny to do is to pick something like Bullet Null Medics. Now we're not gonna use that, we're gonna use 44HZ, but you'll see, we'll switch it once we fight and then I'll show you the replay. <laughs> It'll be Bullet Null Medics, okay, it looks pretty funny. But that needs to be fixed, that's a, that's, a, that's a big problem as well. Actually, I should amend what I just said about the three things that need to be updated, this is actually the fourth. Um, for a player like me that actually watches the replays and cares because I'm trying to learn about my attacks and also because I'm a, I'm a keen player and I do like to change my troop loadouts, I run into this quite a bit. Because I like to have the, sometimes, you know, maybe I'll throw some other stuff in there depending on the defenses I see. I don't want to have the penalize me as an option to do because when I go back I will have no replay. And right now it is kind of penalizing for me to even switch troops because I know I won't have a replay when I do it. So please fix that because it, it's hurting like advanced play strategy, I guess. Anyway, um, but for most players, they're not going to care about it. That's why it's a low priority thing, but it really needs to be fixed. Let's jump into it. All right. Now, again, I'll show you how that replay bug works uh, at the end. Now, the matchmaking always takes a little bit because it'll never find somebody that has three engine room. It's usually five or six. Here's six. He's got a lot of rockets. Um, let's go ahead and change the troops before I forget. Let's go four heavies, four zookas, and we'll get brick in our battle orders. Confirm. Now, deriving stats. Um, so, health is just, it gets really tricky, guys. What are we around? 75% or 80? It goes in increments of 10, right? Here we go. So, uh, we got, if you divide that into five parts of 15, we've got four out of those five parts. It's 80% on the health. And then the damage, uh, let's just start poking around. It looks like around a third or 30%. Um, it's close to 400. We have about 160. Yeah, I'm just gonna call it 30%. Anyway, we need to look at ranges um, and power and rooms. This is really bad attacks. I'm not scouting the way I normally would. Um, but -da 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 -da. anyway, like I said, we're probably gonna die on this. Let's just let's just roll. Um, all right, here we go. Shock that. Let's go ahead and go barrage, barrage. Whoops. Battle orders, cycle shock, critters on the lower flank, artillery, artillery, yeah, he's got max rockets, it's gonna be really bad. And this gets back to why, like, we don't like playing games that are broken, because this shouldn't be possible either, I don't think. Um, let's go ahead and shock this junk. But we'll definitely take a look at the replay. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Um, can I do a distraction critter somewhere? We got the top one. Can we get this bottom one? Smoke, smoke, smoke. Let's get them all right here. Smoke one more. And we got just enough for a flare and a shock. Flare, shock. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Oh, where's that shock coming from? You dirty, dirty shock launcher. Come on. Come on. Papa needs a new pair of shoes. Come on. Dang it. Well, okay. I don't know what this guy's doing, but... I think he ran into Pound Town, guys. Let's take a look at what he did. That's a victory. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, again, underestimating my base, I can almost guarantee it. Yeah, you're trying to bark my rooms, bro. Learn how to read stats. But then again, they're not there. So it takes a little bit of deciphering to understand that I've boosted the heck out of my base. Although with 100% <laughs> with 100% building health, that math is really easy to figure out. Um, come on, dude. What did you do? Is that it? You, you, oh, he thought that's all he needed to do to beat me. Ha! <laughs> it's not going to be that easy, sir. Um, yeah. But like I said, I'm always at a disadvantage because I always have to get to at least three engine rooms, right? Um, but boom, just like that. Now let's, let's take a look at my replay. Just like I told you, um, it's going to be all medics and bullet <laughs> over here, right? Yeah. See that it, it, the replay will fail, but it's pretty funny. And anytime I use battle orders, you'll see him use the energy drink. I do use battle orders pretty soon. So he'll hit the E drink there. <laughs> it replay will fail in just a moment. 
It's kind of funny though, because if you want people to think that like, you know, this is some kind of a meta strategy, like if he goes to look at my replay, he's not going to see how I did that to him. All he's going to see is what I just showed you. He's going to be like, how the heck did that guy beat me? Um, oh look, we got a, we got a crate. Let's open that. Um, boom. Oh yeah, that's what we like. Um, let's just jump into a couple more attacks and we'll wrap it up right there, guys. See if we can keep this win streak going at least. Um, reload the troops and jump into battle. We must have been just outside of that range of that shock launcher. And that's the reason why I like those replays. I'd like to go back and see what the range of that shock launcher was. And I guarantee you there was just one girl probably standing where she shouldn't have been standing. And that was right at the edge of that range and we got popped. But we still beat the guy. Uh, same thing. See a bunch of rockets. But um, let's get those stats figured out. Okay, it's 50% on the health. And he's got a lot higher damage. Probably like 80 or 90. Um... Yeah, it looks like it's 80% on the damage. Okay, so this is a much spicier base with lower health, things hurt. We need to get rockets taken out. And he's got two shock blasters, which I don't care about. Um, we're gonna still drop on the right, because I see more opportunity to get engine rooms coming from the right, just based on how the layout of defensive buildings are. And we need to destroy the rockets that are gonna be problematic. The ones in the front, in this case, I will actually bark them out because I can't really spend a lot of shocks to keep them shocked up because it's going to take us a while to get there. Yeah, this will be a little rough, but hopefully we can at least get the three, but we need four for any type of a win because most players can usually get one off my base. Here we go. Opening with barrage on each, that should do it. We don't need an artillery for these guys. We can actually take out a third. We'll go one, two, artillery, and probably three. Nope, just two. Okay, we need to get this guy out down here as well. Let's also do two artillery, one and two. I'm not worried about time. It's very, very rare these matches come down to time anymore. Um, let's get our troops out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and brick. Now, um, looking at GBE, things are pretty good. I really need to get these rockets out, guys. Let's go ahead and drop one barrage over here. I really should have done artilleries here to get the splash on that engine room, but it's all right. Now, we're moving up. Everything's looking good. I don't want to hit battle orders right now because that mortar's there, and it might just run the bazookas into the mortar. I'll hit battle orders as soon as we start moving into our main attack. Get that mortar down, and go. Now, here we go. Um, what needs to be shocked? Well, mortar and the shock launcher. Let's do two artillery on the rocket. Let's just get rid of it right now. Do another battle orders. Cycle that shock. Put some critters on the lower flank. Although it's going to get hit by the machine gun. That was bad critters. That was bad critters. I was really just trying to distract the shock blaster more. Uh, put a med kit down for the zookas that are getting shocked. Med kits are only level one. Put a shock on the uh, shock blaster, shock launcher. And looks like we'll get one more engine room here. I don't really have enough GBE for a rush, but we can try. Let's go over here. Smoke. We got no troops. Smoke. Reflare. Smoke. And we don't have enough to flare and shock, so we are absolutely dead. We'll flare, and we'll try to do... Oh, I didn't even get critters out in time. Anyway, I think we probably got them on destruction, though, guys. They always underestimate me. Let's see. Yes, we did. Boom! Just like that. So, well, we'll do one more match. That win streak's rolling, guys. You're seeing it right here. This is three engine rooms versus six, okay? And both of them had a lot of rockets, and that one was even spicy. It can be done. You just kind of got to be also a good player to pull this type of thing off. Um, but uh, let's see what he did. I know you're really curious, like, how these guys not beat me? Um, let's see. I'm telling you, it's all about the ice, though. It's all about the ice, guys. Drop ice. So he's going for my little baby shock launchers. Okay. And what troops are you rolling with? HZ with Kavan. I do not recommend Kavan. I don't really want to explain why, but I don't. Um, at least not in this video. Um, so, double time it. And he will get annihilated. His front line will be decimated by the Doom Cannons. And then the Zookas will perish. I already know the outcome before before I see the replay. He does get the center one. Like I said, usually they can get one, but it's a very big stretch for them to get one. After that, they're done. Done, son. 
Another reason I don't like dropping more engine rooms right now is because it's not gonna add any more defenses to my warship, but it adds two things. It adds a building with a lot more health, which does stall and attack, but it also adds more available GBE to my, to my warship, and I don't want my opponents to have more GBE, and I think that also works to my advantage a little bit here. Um, but I'm not recommending this strat for everyone. You do have to be good at attacking because you are in inherently at a disadvantage every time you, you fight like this. Okay, again a lot of rockets. Uh, again, six engine rooms. Let's go ahead and start figuring out stats. Um, this is easy. That's 40% and 50. So he's 40% on the health and 50 on the damage. Guys, health is more important than damage if you have to prioritize one over the other. Just FYI, prioritize health over damage. Um, looking at the positioning of his engine rooms and the defenses that are in our way, I think we're going to start on the left side because if we can, we can take care of these shock blasters early on. They won't be as much of a menace, but then we're just going to have like a sea of rockets to worry about. Um, one barrage, if placed just right, should take care of these rockets and or two artillery. Um... This is going to make a great artillery target because they're all holding hands. And this one's pretty good too because it's on the uh, the engine room. But we need to get the three out in the front first. Let's just start with taking those out. One barrage here. One barrage here. Let's go ahead and get our value right here. I can't pass this up. One and two. Well, whatever. The machine guns are hurt. Um, let's go one and two on this guy, and we'll worry about the other ones later. We gotta have some GBE to get off the boat, right? Um, I hope we don't miss this one. But anyway, we're gonna start over here on the left side. Alright, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and brick. Some distraction critters to draw a shock and shock blaster. Shock in hand. Shocking. Battle orders. Preparing to cycle the shock. Maybe not. Let's get rid of that rocket. One and two. Battle orders. Oh, another one. Um, he needs a barrage. Actually, I might need to do some other stuff. Let's see. No, he needs a barrage. Take him out. I just want to keep a lot of GBE available to make some moves here at the end once the heavies go down. I want to get at least two more engine rooms. Okay, we do have lots of GBE, so we're good. Put a med kit down, get over here, smoke, smoke. Shock when they come out of it. Reflare. Darn it, they got shocked. Um, med kit. Cycle shock. Flare. Uh oh. Shock. Darn it, guys! Sniper tower is gonna be the death of me. Ah, I'm gonna lose this one. That was that was that was on me. I should have flared a little further over. It, guys, it gets a little trickier when I'm trying to commentate this. I'll be honest, but we definitely lost this one. Go ahead and retreat. Well, no, we lost it. There's no way Brick does that on our own. Yeah. You know what? Just let her die. It'll be faster. Okay, that's a great way to wrap up the video anyway. You can't win them all, guys, but we could have. We like, we probably could have. I can almost guarantee we had them on the uh, destruction. But uh, anyway, we'll wrap it up right there. Please let me know in the comments below any other questions and stuff you might have. Uh, I will get more into these strategy videos going forward. I've just had a lot of stuff going on in my life right now as well, so um, I'm being pulled in a lot of directions. But I'm gonna, anytime I get content out there, it'll be good, fresh stuff that you've never seen before, guaranteed, so stay tuned. And remember, guys, be kind to others, because if you're not, you're just being mean, and mean people suck. Have a great day.